people visiting Baku always tell me, how come you're so negative about things? It's so beautiful, people are happy, buildings are so beautiful, construction going on. How come you're so negative? I'm asking them a question. Have you seen a wall along the road from airport to the city center? We call it belt of happiness. It hides the real Azerbaijan from the eyes of the visitors. Behind that wall, you see polluted area, houses of poor people. People walk without happy faces. The beautiful is only a facade. They don't want to show what is happening outside the belt of happiness. <laughs> We were not expecting any revolution in Baku. The idea was to make people to act, to do something. Say that I, I, I don't like this. Change the system. If you go to a protest, they will be jailed. Yeah, we'll be jailed for a week, for example, it's, if it's not a big protest. <laughs> In Azerbaijan, if you are criticizing the government, you can be beaten, you can be kidnapped, and people will not know, uh, your family will not know where you are for days. You can be killed in the entrance of your house. That happened to Elmar Hussainov in 2005. It's still not clear who killed him. Government claims 98% success in solving criminal cases, except the cases against journalists. Jabbar Savalon republished an article from Turkish newspaper dated back to 2003, calling then candidate for president, Ilham Aliyev, gambler, and then suddenly police finds drugs in his pocket and puts him to jail. Same kind of drug planting was used against Enullah Fatulayev in prison. They found drugs in his shoes in prison. They used the same case against satire writer Mirza Sakit. Another one is hooliganism, used against Ghani Madzahi, the editor-in-chief of Azadlik newspaper. So it's kind of open season for journalists in Azerbaijan. My name is Adnan Hajizada. I was the founder and the foreign relations advisor of All Youth Movement. All stands for to be. We encourage young people to be democratic to be tolerant. We were having flash mobs, public lectures, mini protests. Once we heard a thing that really crossed the line of absurdity. The Ministry of Agriculture then imported two donkeys from Germany for breeding purposes. And these premium donkeys cost 42,000 euros per donkey. Adnan put online a video of uh, donkey giving a conference, presenting himself as a German donkey. The donkey can speak five languages, he can play the violin. Donkey, jackass, it's the same in Azerbaijan. People were fast to turn this into a big thing, as if I was making mockery of the presidency. The last case of actual being arrested for defamation, the government lost in the European Court of Human Rights. So they became more, uh, I would say, uh, crafty with arresting people. They either plant drugs on you, or they, they send someone to start a fight, to brawl, and then accuse you of hooliganism. The same with us. Uh, we were arrested as hooligans. Uh, we were sitting in a restaurant. We were beaten up by two big sportsmen. They headbutted I mean, They hit me on my face. And then when we came to police station to report the case, we were detained. And me and Emin, who have never fought anyone in their lives and who are propagators of nonviolence, were arrested. All I did is just I brought a costume from New York, donkey costume. I was sentenced to two years in prison, 
Emin was sentenced to two years and a half. We were bringing together people who had connections, who had power, and they were all with us. They were coming to our forums, they were listening to us, they were thinking about the future of the country. So that was the point when government decided to scare the whole generation. We asked why the Azerbaijan government spent $44,000 to buy two donkeys from Germany. And after I spent 17 months in jail, the question is still not answered. After I was arrested in prison, I thought, if I knew that I would be arrested, I would do so much more. I would do so much more, I would be much more outspoken. So after you get arrested, you actually know that you were arrested for some real things, you know, not for some silly video. Avropa Şurası'nın bu mühteşem sarayında hem Azerbaycan Respublikası hem de Avropa için çok mühim ve ehmiyetli o ehmete malik olan bir hadise baş verir. Biz insan haklarının korunmasını öne çektik. Vatanımızın ve vatandaşlarımızın totalitarizm dövrünün ağır irsinden kılas olmasına çalıştık. Well, after Azerbaijan had acceded to membership of the Council of Europe, which incidentally I, I think I was the only person to vote against, not because I was opposed to Azerbaijan, because I didn't feel they'd met the democratic credentials. And indeed, what happened afterwards was many accusations of hundreds of political prisoners, totally contrary to both the spirit and the, and the letter of the Convention of Human Rights and indeed membership of the Council of Europe. So I was appointed as rapporteur to try and negotiate with the government of Azerbaijan to secure the release of political prisoners. So and the argument was, you've signed these undertakings, that's a condition of your membership. How seriously do you want to engage with the Council of Europe? How seriously do you want to engage with the Western world? How seriously do you want to be viewed as a, a civilized democratic country or not? He was invited as a musician to the sanctioned youth protest rally. He is very outspoken, his songs are very edgy. And they include a lot of profanity. So when he started singing, a lot of more conservative youth came up to the stage and they said that you cannot be singing these profanities because it's against the moral norms of the society. <laughs> Uh, then it got physical. There were provocators, uh, police dressed in plain clothes. They beat him down to the ground. Uh, the bass guitarist, he was dragged around by his hair. They were beaten there, they were beaten again in the police station. They tied his feet against a chair and they beat him on his heels with a police bat for an hour or so. It's an ancient way of torture in Muslim countries. It is very painful. It doesn't leave marks. İşkənciler bayrı nə deyə orada baş salmağın yolu belədir. Adamı çağırırlar, başa salırlar. Mən də çağırırlar, beş, bir-iki dəfə başa salırlar. Bəs salam. Orada mənə dedilər ki, deyərsən ki, biz sənin başa salırıq. Mən dedim, yaxşı. I'm working right now on a story about the president. Aziz dostlar, I have documents showing that the president's family is involved into the construction of the flag square, which was an enormously expensive project, and the government was presenting it as a patriotic project. Well, it turns out that president's family made money on patriotic feelings of the people of Azerbaijan. I sent inquiries to the government about the ownership of the companies, so they knew that I'm doing this. And I think they have other tools to know what I'm doing, <laughs> actually. I received the package. I received the package which included six pictures of me engaged in sexual uh, relations with my boyfriend. They've been apparently filming inside the apartment. There was a short note there, like, you whore. 
behave or you will be defamed. It was a tough decision, but I decided to go public. Mesela bunda değil ki ben prezident ailesini izliyorum her yerde. Sadece araştırdığım her biznesin arkasından onların adları çıkar. Week later they put the video on the website. I can't say I, I didn't expect that because it happened to my colleagues. Some of them quit their jobs as a result of it. So that's why I decided to fight back because someone needs to stop this. I was trying to stay safe. Like I would always have someone next to me. I wouldn't go to places I didn't know. I decided not to have family, like it was a choice made long ago, when my colleague Elmar Hussainov was killed. The moment I heard that he was shot dead, I, I felt guilty because, uh, like he was killed because he was alone. I think her life is under great risk because in spite of all the international attention, I mean, we know with whom we are dealing. Because of the energy interest, the big Western powers are not confronting Azerbaijan too much on human rights and democracy issues because Azerbaijan is a valuable partner in energy society and in a global war against terrorism. I think the international community tends not to ask enough questions of itself. It tends to look at the oil price and the oil security. We do deals with not very pleasant regimes because it's, it's to our commercial benefit. We're speaking about European values, the values of democracy. Then people see scenes on Azerbaijani television, European leaders shaking hands with their corrupt president. I'm glad that the president could confirm today that the country will continue to provide the EU market with significant volumes of energy supply in the future. It's just creates a question, what kind of values are you talking about? <laughs>